From the life-changing to the potentially lethal, there's never a shortage of wild health advice on TikTok. So let's take a look at some now and sort out the pepperoni from the pineapple. Oh boy. I've dealt with more than my fair share of buttholes and rectums in my time as a surgeon, and I've operated on a few as well. Now, I don't want to roast anyone here, but I think I'm on pretty safe grounds explaining to you why you should never do a coffee enema. As your rectum fills with poop, its walls expand and trigger a reflex, allowing you to empty your load. Regular use of enemas in this way can weaken this reflex, telling your brain there's something to get rid of when there really isn't. Eventually, your brain starts to ignore these signals and won't pull the plug even when there's poo to get rid of. Secondly, coffee enemas can disrupt your rectal microbiome. Obviously, your rectum is a dirty place, so the possibility of infection is high. To stop that from happening, there's a high concentration of bacteria in the rectum whose main job it is to modulate immune responses. Feeding your rectum with constant coffee can disrupt those bacteria and make infections more likely. Finally, the acidity of coffee can cause real problems for the rectal mucosa, the thin and very sensitive inner lining. Repeated inflammation can lead to proctitis, and that's inflammation of the rectum, rectal ulcers, and even perforation, a hole, I mean another hole in the rectum. This shouldn't really need to be said, but since I've seen this video and I see a lot of people doing this, coffee is best enjoyed by putting it in just one end. I have been drinking okra water for six Okay, months so now, we're talking about okra water here. Absolutely changed my life. Okay, yes, she's right. This delightful okra slime might look like something a six-year-old would sneeze onto his sleeve, but it's rocket fuel for your gut. It's called mucilage and it's nature's very own lube, just not that kind of lube. It's a soluble dietary fiber which forms a gel in your gut that absorbs water and makes your body's sausage factory run smoother than a politician dodging a simple question. It's excellent fodder for the beneficial bacteria that call our gut home. It slows down food as it passes through the intestines as well, making you feel fuller for longer and it lowers your levels of LDL cholesterol, aka the bad cholesterol that's associated with a higher risk of heart disease and stroke. Fun. So yes, it might look like a snail trail, but okra water can technically be beneficial for your gut health. However, if you cook it rather than making a drink out of it, you'll also get the insoluble fiber and micronutrients as well as mucilage. So that's a much better choice. You can also get mucilage from aloe vera, psyllium husk, flax seeds, and chia seeds. So if that slime is simply too much to bear, you can try one of these other foods. I started drinking cranberry juice every day, not for a UTI, but for my gut hmm. because I had a doctor on my podcast who said that interesting red pigments in your diet is the most important thing this is good advice bacteria okay so that vibrant red color in cranberry juice is due to the presence of polyphenols a type of micronutrient with strong antioxidant or anti-inflammatory properties the polyphenols in cranberries are called proanthocyanidins and have a host of benefits for gut health for example they prevent the growth of harmful bacteria but also act as prebiotics and thus literally provide nourishment for healthy strains of bacteria such as Acamansia, Bifidobacterium, and Lactobacillus. Now, the best way to consume this fruit is definitely eating them whole because by juicing them, you're going to lose some fiber. However, if cranberry juice is your only option because you're in a hurry, it's definitely worth getting. More generally, all plants that are shades of red and purple are great sources of polyphenols. Think raspberries, blueberries, red cabbage, stuff like that. Simply eating as wide a variety of these foods as possible will maximize the range of polyphenols that you eat and support as many different strains of useful bacteria in the gut as possible. Okay, so offering a mum who's just had a C-section and is now cradling her newborn a stick of chewing gum might seem a bit crazy, but her husband obviously knows what he's doing. Weirdly enough, sometimes after abdominal or gynecological surgery, your intestines shut up shop and go on strike, leaving you bloated and constipated. This is known as a paralytic ileus. Chewing gum can actually solve this problem by tricking your body into thinking it's eating some food. A bunch of gut hormones and digestive enzymes are released to stimulate the gastrocolic reflex. This results in increased stomach and intestinal contractions and gets the great poop traffic jam moving again. Chewing sugar-free gum is even better as it might contain sorbitol, an artificial sweetener which acts as an osmotic laxative by drawing water into the colon and improving gut motility. 
Happy pooping. Finally, you could try drinking black coffee. The combination of polyphenols, fiber, and caffeine will shorten the time it takes for food to move through the gut and activate something called the cephalovagal reflex, where simply seeing and smelling food causes the release of digestive juices. Fun fact, sometimes after major bowel surgery, black coffee is actually part of the post-surgery protocol for precisely this reason. So I've been drinking chia seed water. I'm on day four. I just put a tablespoon of chia seeds into this water bottle and lemon juice. Let me tell you something. This is like the realest thing I've ever learned on the internet. I am the most constipated person I know, literally. No such thing as TMI. Chia seeds, I have never been so regular. Okay, so this creator's right. Chia seeds definitely can help unclog your drain pipes. It might look like molten frog spawn, but this is one TikTok trend that actually does work and won't end up with you going to the emergency room. Just be careful if you currently only consume a small amount of fiber. Suddenly increasing the amount of fiber that you can eat can cause bloating and cramps. So start low and go slow. I generally recommend increasing your daily fiber intake by around five grams each week. However, chia seeds only help with constipation patient, let me introduce you to the Goldilocks of pooping. Not too hard, not too soft, psyllium husk. This product will soften hard poop and harden soft poop, so it's good for constipation and diarrhea. There's even some evidence it can be used to treat the symptoms of certain types of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. The reason for this versatility is the high amount of soluble fiber it contains, 80% versus around 10% with chia seeds. This increased fiber forms a better viscous gel-like substance in the intestines, which attracts more water, adds bulk, and improves regularity. If that weren't enough, it's cheaper than chia seeds and backed up by more research for treating specific bowel issues. And it doesn't look like you're drinking something taken straight out of a pond. Interesting. Okay. Lemon ginger shots. Okay, so your diet definitely has a major impact on your skin, and it's not just about what you eat. Your gut talks to your skin all the time through the gut microbiome and the immune system. In fact, often when there are gut problems, the manifestation of that problem is on the skin. For example, dermatitis herpetiformis in celiac disease or skin ulcers in Crohn's disease. We also know children with eczema have, on average, lower levels of gut microbiome diversity and low levels of helpful gut bacteria. This all suggests a disrupted gut microbiome leads to inflammation in the skin-gut axis. But it gets even more complicated than this. Anyone suffering from IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, may suffer stress as a result of their symptoms. This, in turn, causes acne breakouts or flare-ups of chronic skin conditions. On top of that, your diet, levels of exercise, sleep, and environment can all play a big part in your skin health. So instead of relying on expensive products or necking lemon and ginger shots every day, you might find it easier and cheaper to just make some lifestyle changes to see improvements in your skin. Okay, so saying just look after your general health isn't as sexy as some of the content on TikTok makes out. But the truth is, health is about much more than just hacks. It's about the way we live our lives and making sustainable changes. And if you want to make good gut health a priority for you, you might consider taking supplements like fiber or Husk. So to find out how I rank all the major supplements on the market, click here to watch this video now.